The legendary actor Dilip Kumar passed away at the age of 98 after a prolonged illness. I am heartbroken. I had interacted with him and interviewed him quite a few times. I am sharing the Dilip Kumar story with the millions who considered him as the ultimate actor, including Amitabh Bachchan, Vijayanti Mala, Asha Parikh, Shaban Azmi, and many more from the industry. After a fight with his father over wife over to fetch suing threat for his sister, the sensitive Yusuf Khan ran away from his home to Pune. From being the assistant manager in an army canteen, washing vegetables and setting tables for the British Tommies, he set up his own fruit stall. The tug of acting brought him to Bombay, now known as Mumbai. An interview with Devi Karani resulted in Dilip Kumar being signed for Johar Bata. His name was changed to Dilip Kumar, though he personally preferred Jahangi or Vasudev. In Shaheed Made in 1948, Dilip revealed an extraordinary talent for expression as the insurgent youth who becomes a martyr. Dilip Kumar became a star. The same year witnessed the success of Mela, a Devdas imitation, where Dilip's childhood sweetheart played by Nargis is married off to another man. This state of thwarted passion set up a chain of films that depicted Dilip Kumar as a doomed lover. Andaz made in 1949 and co-starring Raj Kapoor and Nargis with Dilip for the first and last time. Babul made in 1950, Jogan again in 1950 and Didar in 1951. The audience took cathartic pleasure in seeing Dilip suffer on screen. His acting style was carefully premeditated and a result of consecutive thought process rather than a spontaneous expression. Repeatedly playing the tragedy and took its toll and by the time Dilip was portraying the ultimate luckless lover, Dev Das, co-starring Suchitra Sen and Vijanti Mala, he had to seek psychiatric counselling. He told me and I quote, I was advised to veer away from tragedy and move towards comedy. Dilip now did light-hearted costume dramas like Azad and Kohenur with Meena Kumari and musical dramas like Naya Daur and Madhumati with Vijanti Mala. Vijanti Mala replaced Madhubala and Naya Daur. Ironically, the tragedy king Dilip Kumar and tragedy queen Meena Kumari did two costume capers at the peak of their respective careers. Mughal Azam released in 1960 and Ganga Jamna released in 1961 were not only box office bonanzas but Dilip's performances ranked as high art. In Mughal Azam and Prithviraj has Madhubala imprisoned, Dilip seeds with an important anger, eloquent in his almost deafening silence. And Hindi films had never witnessed the kind of anger that Dilip expressed in Ganga Jamna. His relationship with Washerwoman, played by Vijanti Mala, had multiple shades and nuances. He causes her to bleed when he hits her in pain. He causes her to laugh when he wraps her dupatta around his head. He causes her to weep when he falls at her knees in an entreaty to war. And he causes her death when he inadvertently pushes her towards a bullet. Ganga Jamna was suffused with a love that went beyond plain passion. The 60s finally saw Dilip lose his bachelor status when at 44 he married the beautiful Sarah Banu who was 22, half his age. Sarah Banu had idolized Dilip Kumar from childhood and it was a dream come true for her. After the triumph of Ram or Sham in which Dilip Kumar played a double role opposite Vahida Rahman and Mumtaz and exhibited great comic timing, his career ran out of steam in the 70s. When Ramesh Sippy had approached Hima Malini for a double role on the lines of Ram or Sham, Hima was hesitant. How will I be able to do what Dilip Saab has done? With a resplendent performance in Manoj Kumar's Kranti in 1981, Dilip once again entered a busy phase of his life. Personal upheavals in the form of a short-lived marriage with Asma didn't curtail his performances in films like Shakti, where he was pitted against Amitabh Bachchan. With his trio of Subhash Gai films, Vidata in 1982, Karma in 1986, and Saudagar in 1991, Dilip Kumar continued to leave no emotion unexplored. There are few Hindi film actors who can claim to have worked so consistently at the highest level of his craft. Dilip Kumar deservedly enjoyed uninterrupted stardom for 50 years. May his soul rest in peace. When I first expressed my desire to be an actor in school or in college, in uh, inter-school or intercollegiate uh, plays, 
I was told by a well-meaning friend of mine, if you want to be an actor, watch Dilip Kumar's films. The first Dilip Kumar film I watched was Andaz, where he matched his histrionic talent with Raj Kapoor and Nargis. And then, of course, uh, he became an institution, a textbook. And uh, what would be more, uh, how do I put it? Uh, I mean, uh, what would be a more uh, auspicious uh, sign than finding him sit on the very first row at the Tejpal Auditorium where I made my debut as an actor on stage. And then I went on to rubbing shoulders with him at several uh, filmland uh, uh, okay, uh, seminars, parties, gatherings, events. And uh, the one thing he told me that stayed with me was, I like the way you conduct yourself. And uh, I thought I should have said that to him because he was a picture of dignity and uh, absolute control over everything that he did. Uh, the icing on the cake, of course, was when he asked me to act in his film, his debut directorial film, Kalinga. And uh, though we started the shoot of the film, uh, unfortunately, uh, the film was not complete. Uh, Mr. Dilip Kumar was an enigma. Uh, watching him in uh, his uh, landmark films like Tarana, Madhumati, Devdas. I always thought that Bimal Roy's Devdas was the best version of Sarachandra Ch uh, Chatterjee's novel. And uh, of course, Ganga Jamna and uh, Mughal Azam to crown it all. Mm. We knew that uh, we were looking at uh, a different school of acting, uh, a different uh, uh, persona on screen altogether. And uh, of course, I still remain uh, surprised and I've never had a chance to ask him as to why he turned down the offer to play Omar Sharif's role in David Lean's uh, Lawrence of Arabia. I mean, imagine if uh, he had done that, he would have been an international star, which he deserved so much. Uh, today he's no longer with us. He lived a good life of 98 years. And uh, of course, his legacy would live on. Uh, we would continue to watch him and uh, learn from his uh, <clears throat> several uh, you know, uh, attempts at uh, creating what uh, a character is, whether it is the tragedy king in so many of his films or whether it's the comedy king in Azad or Rama Shah. He was absolutely versatile and uh, he wasn't the kind of uh, glamour star material which a lot of the later actors became, but uh, he will always remain the bottom line in acting for all of us. Rest in peace, Yusuf Saab. It was nice knowing you and thank you for all the great memorable moments and all your uh, encouragement and inspiration that you personally gave me. God bless.